Well, hello everybody. Hope you guys are doing great today. No, I'm not Troy Brewer, but I am the better looking Ben Brewer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Taylor. <laughs> Hope you guys are doing good, good today. Today we are going to have a very special guest. And that special yes. guest is actually my mama, Pastor yes. Leanna Brewer. How are you today? I'm so good. How are you? Oh, I doest well, Lord. Yes, you do. <laughs> you are doing well. You're a good boy. And then, of course, we are also joined by the Immaculate Miss Connie. How are you today? Woo-hoo. I'm good. I'm super excited that Pastor Leanna is on with us today. Thank you. It's going to be really good. It's going to be a gonna good be episode. Fun. It is. It is. I hope mm-hmm. you guys are, are Wow. I just had a brain fart. Hope you guys are doing well today. Today. <laughs> Man, I'm on struggle it's bus. It's the rain. It, it is. is, man. It's cold out there. But... It is cold. What happened? Mm-hmm. I know. I don't I'm know. like, where are you? Yeah. Spring, come back. Don't know. Yeah. But we are also joined by the amazing Miss Rebecca. How are you today? I'm excited mm-hmm. too, like Connie said. Yeah, no, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be so good. Thank Love you guys y'all. for letting me join you. Yes. Yes. Thank you for saying yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. I didn't even know where the studio was. I was like, I, I'm not sure where I'm supposed to go. But <laughs> yeah, when you asked for the address, I was like, oh. my goodness, you haven't ever been over no, here. No, huh? I haven't been here. Y'all like move all the time to new studios <laughs> and it feels like build things. new ones and make new ones. And I'm like, okay. Well, let's go ahead and start this off with you, Miss Rebecca. We have a couple of quick announcements. If you'll go ahead and jump on that for me. Yes, we do. So we have three announcements. One of them is that our Sparks Missions trip will be going this June to Brownsville, Texas again. I can't believe it's that time again. And it's going to be June the 3rd through the 6th. You can register online through um, Brush Fire. You could go to Open Door Experience. Dot com. com. Correct. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. And there is a link through Brushfire and you have to register to be able to go. No passport is required this time. We're doing, or I'm just leave it a surprise. It's going to be awesome. It is going to be awesome. It is. It's uh, always so much fun. And it's an out of school, mm-hmm. banging off the summer for all of these kids that we get to have an impact on. Yes. And it's just so much fun. And what better way to start the summer than with I the missions know. outreach. I, I know. It. It's so great. <laughs> it's going to be so good. And then tonight, our amazing Pastor Troy will be preaching at 7 p.m. Get ready because he has a special word tonight. And also Sunday, he has a new sermon series starting called Keep the change and i'm so excited for that are y'all ready for that yes it's i'm gonna ready be really good it mm-hmm. sounds like a bad uh, nickelback joke but it, yeah <laughs> well, it's, on, it's on repentance yes on yes. repentance he told us that yesterday yes. so. i'm super excited I, I know it's crazy but i love the subject of repentance i just mm-hmm. i think it's one of god's greatest gifts to us it Amen. really is it is and with the word that we got from the eclipse mm, yes. i like timing can't be better was that mind blowing i know mm. that oh was gosh, it was that was was a wow it was that you're just like okay i didn't even know to ask to see mm-hmm. that or to dream that and god just said ta-da Here you go. Yes. i love that too like, cuz i was like okay well it's going to be another eclipse right. and yeah it's going to it's a powerful word yes. but i've seen an eclipse before so it's going right. to be fine but then seeing it like immediately you just felt the power of the you lord you felt, felt mm-hmm. the power of the moment yeah and you knew that like okay this is a privilege to get to see this in mm-hmm. person. This is not something. What a privilege. Yeah. What a privilege. It's a mm-hmm. privilege. Yeah. Well, we got a ton of people in the chat right now. I see Charles Jones is in here, and I also see Anna Barber is in here. Hey, Anna. Oh, I want to make fun of you so bad, Anna. <laughs> I'm not letting him. But Shelly Ray is also in the Facebook chat. Good hey, to see you, Shelly. We have Shelley? Susan Wolf in here, too. I Sherry worked Morgan. Out, I worked out with Shelly this morning. Well, did you? Yes. <laughs> She's my new personal trainer. Wow. Right <laughs> Add on. that to her, her list of things that she does. But it's good to see all y'all in the chat room today. And uh, for those of y'all who want to stick with us behind the veil, I'm going to briefly explain to you how to do it. All you have to do is go to odx.tv. And if you are a tier two or a, pardon me, a stage two or a stage three uh, subscriber, go to the front page. And on the front page, there is a button that is lit up that says the Pulse 24. Click on that and you can jump right on in. That's all you got to do. So... There we go. That's all of our announcements. You're explaining that like you're trying to explain it to me. (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't going to say that, but I was thinking it. (laughs) Oh, I know. I could tell. I know. Because that's the same voice you use with me when you're going, okay, mom, you just do this. Just push the the shiny button, mom. Just push the button. (laughs) So what's funny is people are like, well, we can't find this. We literally made the button glow. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm one of those people. If Mm -hmm. that's you, no judgment. And that's me too. So. Now, a couple of other things that we have that involve you, actually, is Uh-oh. we have a few of your books. Yay! Oh, yeah. 
So here in just a minute, we're going to do a giveaway. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to tell everybody to call the number 877-413-0888. And to the first eight callers, that's right, the first eight callers, we will be giving you one of Miss Leanna's or Pastor Leanna's amazing books. So she has the Sparky's Mexico Adventure. She has Sparky's Amazon Adventure. And she has, let's see what else. Oh, Sparky, Sparky and Jimmy. And Jimmy. Yeah. And then she also has the Sparky Amazon Adventure Ooh. Coloring Book. Yes. Ooh. Gotta have that the coloring one. book. Yes. Yes. I need that one for the boys. Yes. Yeah, so much fun. Oh, These that. are all true stories of, of trips that we've done. And um, yeah, so they're all true stories, but they're written in a kid's perspective to kids because mm-hmm. that's the ministry we do as kids. Mm-hmm. So. Well, guys, if you haven't read any of these books or checked them out, you definitely don't want to miss this opportunity to get them for, or get them for free. Share them with your kiddos. Share them with yes. your friends' kiddos. Uh, she said it's so like the one with Jimmy is actually a very true story. And it's one of yeah. the first kids we rescued in Africa. <laughs> Jimmy was a very special story about a little boy who had a heart condition and just the faith that he had. And I won't tell the whole story because I don't need to be crying on film, <laughs> but um, it, it's just his faith was so strong and so great that it impacted my life and will impact it for the rest of my life. Just, just knowing how he believed. And it was just. The little boy believed God, and it was beautiful. And then the story of Mexico is about another little boy named Luis that had great faith that when we told all of the kids, these are all orphans, we take them to a candy store, and we said, you can have anything in the store, anything. Mm -hmm. And they even repeated, anything? Yes, anything. And they all come with one little piece of candy. And we're like, you can have anything. You know, we repeated it again. We made sure a translator was translating so they understood what we were saying. And they repeated it back. Anything, yes. They come back with a different piece of candy. We're like, okay, the, we're going to have to work on this understanding thing. Mm-hmm. And comes one little boy named Luis with the whole wedding cake. <laughs> so and he was awesome. like, oh yeah, he's like, you said anything. And we said, we did say anything. And he takes it to the bus and all of the kids on the bus are like, Luis, you're going to be in trouble because he was always mm-hmm. in trouble. And he said, the gringo said we could have anything we wanted. <laughs> and I said, that's, that's it, anything. And the Lord says that to us all the time. You mm-hmm. can have anything. And we ask for this. Well, God, if you'll just do this one little mm-hmm. thing. And he's mm-hmm. standing up there screaming, going, anything. Mm-hmm. And I'm, okay, God, I'll trade it for this other little thing. And he's like, you're not getting what mm-hmm. I'm saying. You can have anything. And when you get it. Just like Luis, it's not just for you. Mm. But he got on that bus and he shared the cake with everybody. And he said, it's not for me. It's for all of us. And so whenever you deny God giving you whatever it is you're asking for, because for whatever reason, we don't believe him or we think it's too much. It's not just for us. We don't need just enough for us. We need enough for everybody. And so that's the story of Mexico. The Amazon is about Mm. two beautiful little girls that were best friends. And um, I had a best friend early in ministry, and her name was Paula. We get to the Amazon. The little girl, one little girl's name is Ileana, which is Leanna. And mm-hmm. the other little girl is Paula, and it's Paula. Oh, and I was yeah. like, Lord, what are you doing? So it's their story, and it's really neat. Oh, that's so, so my sweet. Yes. Well, there you go, guys. Again, you don't want to miss this opportunity. You ready? Go ahead and call 877 877- 413-0888 right now and be the, one of the first eight callers and you can have one of these amazing books. On top of that, Pastor Leanna is going to sign these here in just a minute yes. too. So you'll have a signed be copy. happy to. Oh, goodness. I'll be like your dad. He, he used to say when we first got married and now it's more <clears throat> true than then. Um, he would say, he would sign something. He'd say, keep this because one day it's going to be worth money. Because <laughs> <Yeah, exactly. laughs> he'd tell everybody even then, mm-hmm. 30, 40 years ago, mm-hmm. I'm going to be famous one day. And I was like, mm-hmm, yeah, right. <laughs> well, well, who knew? Who knew? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I'm digging up those old checks that he signed. <laughs> the signature hasn't changed. <laughs> no. But... You are a world traveler, mm-hmm. and you just got back from Uganda with me. I did. And I know these girls have some quejos, some questions. Okay. What is, yes. <laughs> yes. Best 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 questions? Uh, That's quejos? okay. I, I know. Quejos means games. Yeah. Oh. I have games okay. for you. I'm cool. Whatever she game you'd like too, to I'm play. Sure, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Monopoly. <laughs> Solitary. He's making up words over there. I love it. Uh, anyway. <laughs> 
Connie, you want to go ahead and start us off? Yes. Yes. So with Uganda, when you, I know you've been so many times. Yes. But with this recent trip that y'all just got back from, with Barrett getting to go with you on like his first international <gasps> trip, so amazing. So can you just tell me what it was like for you? Like already your kiddos are a part of this life, but getting to be a part of the first trip that your grandbaby, your first grandbaby got to go on with you. It was so special in so many ways. So Barrett is the oldest of the grandchildren and uh, we, you know, FaceTime hasn't been around for that long. Mm -hmm. It it has been, but for everybody that you guys know, it's Mm -hmm. been around forever, but for me, it hasn't been. And um, so when Barrett was like, Two, he really started understanding Jaja's gone for like a long time. Mm-hmm. And so I would tell him, I'm going to Africa. And so I would I was able to start FaceTiming mm-hmm. him from from the village. So mm-hmm. he would see the babies at the Forever Home, mm-hmm. our first Forever mm-hmm. Home, our Spark Home. And he would see them and I would sit on the porch with them because that's the only place I could get reception. Oh, mm-hmm. And so these guys are his age and they were mm-hmm. all little bitty at the same time. And so I would FaceTime and he would see the babies there and they would see him on the, the phone. And so they would start talking to each other. So every every time I would go, he would FaceTime these same mm-hmm. kids. Mm-hmm. And and he would ask me, when am I going to see my friends? And they'd say, when am I going to see my friends? And and it wow. was just, it's been really sweet all this time. And it occurred to me when we got there, I was like, he's going to get to see his friends. Oh, my God. And to see their faces when they saw him. Oh, it was so much fun. <laughs> and it was so cute because, you know, Troy always makes fun of people when they first see him. They're like, you're shorter than I thought you were. <laughs> they, oh they saw Barrett and they were like, you're so big. Yes, he's so tall. Oh he is big. And they were all just laughing. They're like, you're so big. Yeah. But it was really neat. That was really sweet. And for him to be able to go and and see what he's always heard about. Mm-hmm. That's oh. And he loved it. Of course he loved it. But who, who could not love it? You've been. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Who could not love it? It's like the greatest place on earth. But Y'all quit tearing up. I know. I know. We, I know. we, we just I started. I told you. I told you. See? Well, here's, here's some uh, stories. amusement for you real quick. I just looked over at the chat, and Jean, Jean called Domino's trying to call our hotline. <laughs> Like pepperoni with pineapple <laughs> on it. Oh, <laughs> if you're making orders, we're hungry. Send Jane a book. They, you know. <laughs> <laughs> For those of y'all who don't know, the number is 877-413-0888. Our amazing <laughs> moderators are putting in the chat room. Oh, I, you can call Domino's if you want, but you're not getting a free book. <laughs> However, you can send us pizza. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Oh, that is so funny. funny. Uh, Rebecca, what question do you have for? No, her? I was just thinking about um, when I first came to Open Door and I carried Barrett and he was a, a, just in diapers and his beautiful little head and he was bald and I would hold him during worship <laughs> and I have pictures on my phone and then just to see how, how he's grown and he's, he's helping at church. Yeah. He's in the media team. He has a good attitude. And then at that age to experience that, um, what can you or... If there is children that it's in their heart to help and give and parents that are iffy, like letting your kids go to mission trip, is there anything that you that you could say to the parents for those that yeah. um, I don't know what, the, what, what would be the right question, but I think you know what I'm trying to say. I do. I do. One of the things that Troy said uh, many years ago. And he he still says it all the time. Mm -hmm. Don't protect your kids from Jesus. Mm -hmm. He had to say that to me. That's where he came up with it is. And and our kids have been on missions trips since since they were We're born. But, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't that it was letting, letting Jesus take them through places that I'm thinking as a mom, I want to be a helicopter mom and keep Mm -hmm. them from getting hurt or keep them from being misunderstood or keep them from all of these things that we as moms want to protect our Mm -hmm. kids from. And a lot of times it's Jesus. He's Mm -hmm. like, no, no, I I'm walking them through something because I have somewhere for them to go. And we're just stewards of our children. We don't actually own them. Like we'd like to think we do. (laughs) We're just stewards. And, um, so I would say first get them involved locally. Mm -hmm. Definitely 100% get them, get them involved here before you take them anywhere else. Um, but take them, you know, to your, to your local food bank, Mm -hmm. um, let them experience, let them see, let them see what it means to serve Mm -hmm. and not judge. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because if so there's good. anything in you that is a judgy person and you're judging other things, your kids are judgy too. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to take no, them on a mission no. field in that. You so want good. them to have a pure heart of this is how we serve and not to look at other people. Barrett has never heard these people are poor. Mm-hmm. He's never heard we're going to go help people that that, you know, don't have. And so we're going to go and rescue them or whatever. It's, mm-hmm. that's not the attitude we have. We're going to see our mm-hmm. friends. These are our mm-hmm. family. So this good. is what we get to do. And this is what they give to us. And this is what we give to them. And so he's always understood that. And all of the kids have the, mm-hmm. all of the grandkids and, um, there's more to come. They, mm-hmm. some of them have been to Mexico. They just haven't been overseas yet. Cause that's a long, that's a long, long, long flight. And how long was this flight? So he was on the plane. He flew from Dallas to, mm-hmm. to, to Houston and from Houston to Qatar, okay. from Houston to Qatar, wow. 16 hours Wow. from Qatar. He had a, a nine hour layover, 12, 12 hour layover. I had a nine and then he had <laughs> wow. to fly from Qatar to Uganda, which is five and a half hours. Then get in a bus and drive six hours to the village. Wow. So it's a lot. I mean, you, you have yeah. to make sure, you know, which is why we don't normally take children yeah, correct. Um, on these kinds of trips. Yeah. We do to Mexico. But but to take them to local places, mm-hmm. take them, let them help mm-hmm. in children's church. Let them help in the nursery. Mm-hmm. Let them help, you know, if, if you have a heart for the nursing home, if your kids love old people. Mm-hmm. It's a great I, place to I go. Love, I know, <laughs> teach right? them. Teach them to love your neighbors. Yeah. Yeah, Teach them to go, hey, do you see that that neighbor next door? You know, maybe it's a single mom. Let's let's go mow her yard. Let's Mm. go. If you see that trash, that was where my parents Mm. started. If you see a piece of trash in the parking lot of Walmart, you pick it up. Mm -hmm. You do not walk past it. Teach your children not to walk past somebody who needs help. Go open the door for that Mm -hmm. person. Go, Go say thank you to the police officer. Just those simple little things that you teach your kids here, then the they'll, it'll be ingrained mm-hmm. in them and they'll know how to do it when they go. And that those are the things that you don't protect your kids from. Those are the things that, that the Lord says, if you can be faithful in these small things, you can be faithful. I'll make mm-hmm. you ruler over the big so things. Good. And so Barrett's whole life, he's been taught, go, go say hi to that, that police officer and say, thank you, that fireman, mm-hmm. that nurse, that doctor, whatever. And, um, and, but he's been to all the street outreaches, the homeless outreaches. So I looked over and saw Walmart is owned by China and I got really confused. I'm not sure where that came from. But. <laughs> well, I still pick up trash in the parking lots. I personally don't go to Walmart because it's too chaotic for yeah, me. But I agree. I, I agree with Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. Go you to know, H-E-B. I, I absolutely. <laughs> you know, I, I live in small town now. I go to a really small grocery store. <laughs> I bet that's nice. <laughs> it yes. is not. You're limited on your, your resources, but you get creative on your cooking because I just, yeah, because I don't like the big crowd. So mm-hmm. I agree. No, well, thank you, Pastor Leanna, because that yeah. is very, very important. That, Did that answer your question? Yeah, because okay. it is. It, we start at home. Yeah, it does. Before we go it out. It does. It starts with our house first. So thank you. That is so good. I'm pretty sure it does. a lot of parents are loving what they're hearing right now, and it's what we need for I, our children. I saw something, and I don't get to watch the news often because I'm I'm always gone, mm-hmm. and um, this might be completely off your topics, but no, I know your fine. dad, so it's okay. No, go for it. Uh, it can't <laughs> no. be any worse than anything he has said on this. <laughs> no. No. But I was watching the news yesterday and I thought, you know, it, it's it, what it was is it was a ruling that came down on two parents that their son had had killed some, oh, s- some students that. and the parents were on trial. And for the first time, you're hearing people stand up and saying, parents, you're going to have to take responsibility for your children. I don't know where that was lost. Mm hmm. Um, and it, and it, it got lost and, and people blame, you know, the, the government and the schools and all of these, but it's the parents who gave that away mm-hmm. and you willfully gave away your rights and your responsibilities and allowed someone else to govern your children. But ultimately God gave those to us, They're our children, and we're responsible for them. And so now the government is saying it's out of control. And so it starts at home. Wow. Mm. You have to mm. govern your own children. And mm-hmm. if you don't, you are going to be held responsible. And so it's a big wake up call mm-hmm. to a, a generation that was told you don't have, you know, you don't have the rights to your own children. You don't have these responsibilities, mm-hmm. but you do. Mm-hmm. And it's coming back to that. And I'm so grateful. I hate yes. that this has had to happen. Mm-hmm. But For parents that. need to know mm-hmm. you are responsible when you stand before the Lord. He's going to say, I didn't give them to your government. I didn't give them to your neighbor or to your parents or to somebody else. I gave them to you and how you raise these children and how you govern them 
is what I'm going to hold you accountable to. I I remember one time I was in, um, I was in Kenya and I had the opportunity to go speak to the Maasai tribe Mm -hmm. and it was to the elders, which they don't, they don't respect women at all, (laughs) but that's all right. You know, it's Mm -hmm. their culture. They've been this way for, for however long. And for whatever reason, though, that group of men invited me to come and speak and I didn't know it, it was like a last minute thing. And I was like, okay, Lord, here I am, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever. Uh, I don't know what you want me to speak on. And, um, of course he gives you words in the right time. And the word that he gave me was to the leaders and it was to the head elder. Mm-hmm. And it was, God is holding you responsible as a man to take care of your wife and your children. Because what I found out after I left there, they were, they intermarried their daughters starting at seven years old. They, they sell their daughters to other tribal Perhaps. members to become wives at seven and nine years old. And, and the women were starting to rebel against that and say, wow, wait a second, we need to yes. find, we need to find a safe place for mm-hmm. our girls. And I didn't know that that was What's what happened? was going on. All I know is the word the Lord gave me was the Lord mm-hmm. is going to hold you responsible as a father, as a leader, as a man mm-hmm. to protect your wife and your children. And it was a really strong, and they took, they received it very well because it was the Lord who opened up that door and it was a timely, timely word. And there was a big breakthrough that happened because of that. But us as moms too, Mm -hmm. the Lord is going to hold us responsible for how we steward our children and we cannot protect our kids from Jesus. Correct. Mm -hmm. He has a call on their lives and we need to recognize what that call is from the time they're little bitty Mm -hmm. and start stewarding that and saying, okay. This is where my kid is geared. This is where the Lord has called my child to. And I need to do everything I can do to partner with the Lord and make sure that this is who my kid becomes. Amen. So Yeah, look at your yep. son. He's I know. Here with us. I know. I love that. You're served what? well. <laughs> and that's She's served good. well. Yeah, yeah, all of I my so kids are all of them. Speaking incredible. of the kids, oh Shubu um Raymond's sorry. <gasps> oh I'm sorry, booty. What? <laughs> I'm texting her. My rainbow. Yeah. I love her. Rayma is in the chat, and so is George. Yeah. Hey, George. <clears throat> There's two of my kids. Yeah, he said he misses you already. I Aww. know. I miss you. We're working on getting you here, George. So speaking of the chat, we have a question for you. Yes. And it's from Daryl McCray. He, uh, he wants to know, what was it like for you to have your kids with you when y'all rescued like your first kiddos? Wow. You know, it was, it was surreal. Um, but it was also very powerful because our kids actually don't hear us say it. Mm -hmm. They see us do it. Mm. And I think that's too, it's important. A lot of times, um, we, as parents will tell our kids, you know, you need to do this, this, and this, but what we're actually doing is complete opposite. And your Mm -hmm. kids learn what you do by what you do, what you're saying to them. it, It only, reemphasizes what you actually do. But if you're saying two different things, if you're saying one thing and doing something else, you're sending mixed messages and you have mixed up kids. Mm -hmm. But if you actually are who you are, who you say you are in public and you're that way at home and you actually do what it is you say you're going to do, then that leaves a foundation for your kids to go, okay, this is truth. Mm -hmm. And that's how you demonstrate Jesus. And that's what we've been able to do. And now all my kids are rescuers. All of them are. I love it. They all Mm -hmm. do that. So it's a, it's a real honor. You mentioned how the Lord expects you to um, steward your children and steward what it is that he's geared them towards. Mm -hmm. Did, did you feel like you had an anointing to recognize that on your children or was it something that came easy or did you have to study each one and, and see what it was that the Lord was, had placed in each, each of your kiddos? Um, no, it, it was easy for me because my mom and dad recognized it in us. Mm-hmm. So it was something I was taught from the time I was born. You know, it, my mom would always tell me, you're the goingest kid I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I, I can't help it. I just go. That's just how mm-hmm. I'm wired. And she was, they were okay with it. You know, they were like, okay, in the right season, they were kind of mm-hmm. like Mary. Okay. But right now you're mm-hmm. sticking with us. You right. cannot go mm-hmm. until this time in your life. <laughs> yeah. So they did steward it, but they never stopped me from being a, a, a dreamer and a wanderer and a goer. They were like, okay, these are your perimeters until mm. the right time. But in all my kids, you, from the time they're little bitty, you can already tell you ask them, what do you want to be when you grow up? What is your dream? Start talking. Mm-hmm. Kids know already. Mm-hmm. We already know. It just gets taken away from us as we grow up. And the 
that's not possible or you can't afford to do that or you're not smart enough or all of these things start coming in and people divert from who God's called them to be and who is who he has ordained them to be from the foundations of the earth. He already you already are destined to be that person. It's just the world comes in and tells us why we can't be. Real quick before we get before we go behind the veil, because <clears throat> it's already been thirty minutes. Sorry. Um, no, that's no, good. That's good. I'm yeah. saying like I told you earlier, it goes yeah. by fast. But before we do that, Annette Amos actually has a question. It says, just jumped on, so I hope I'm not doing a uh, reason. What was your first rescue or your most memorable rescue? Oh, wow. So, huh. What was my first one? It was Colin um, in Uganda. They're all so rememberable, though. I mean, it's just all of those kids are very much... Um, they're very, they're very much individuals to us. We know them. We know them by name. We still know them. We, you know, it's they become a part of us. But, but Colin was the first one, and it was it was the same trip that God gave me the acronym for Spark and gave me the call to ministry for Spark, and so it was a very impactful one for me. It's been 28 years now, and uh, yeah. So Colin was a little boy in Uganda. He was. I don't really know how old he was. He was eight or nine. He was the same age as Ben at the time. And obviously he's now still the same age as Ben. But but at the time, uh, Ben was our oldest son. I'm trying to think how old I am. And yeah, you're 33. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait. <laughs> yeah. So um, we, were, we were doing a big crusade. Troy was preaching at the time. You know, I... My ministry was to my husband and to my kids, and mm-hmm. that was a lot. I was busy. You know, I had four kids. We had, we had two teenage kids that came to live with us at the time. We were busy with church and ministry, and Troy was working, and so it was a lot. Um, but on that trip, the Lord told me, I have a ministry for you. And I was like, I, I, I don't know what else I can do. I'm like full-time busy mm-hmm. with all of this. And he said, I want you to take care of my orphans and widows. And mm. I thought, well, where am I going to find an orphan? (laughs) Where am I going to find one? And this was our second trip to Uganda. It wasn't our first. And on that trip, uh, Colin came up. It came up to Troy. And Troy was speaking at this really huge street crusade, thousands of people. And um, he he makes his way through all the security and all of that and goes right up to Troy. And he says, sir, you must feed me for I am hungry. (laughs) Troy was like, I love this kid. (laughs) So, of course, Troy and everybody here knows him was like, why are you asking the fat guy to feed you? (laughs) I was like, leave this poor little boy alone. And so he gave him to me. He was like, okay, you stay with my wife and then I will feed you after I'm I'm done preaching. And so just making conversation. I'm a young mom. I I really am not experienced in the world yet. And, um, I said, Colin, where's your mom and dad? You know, cause this is a big crowd and this kid's out by himself mm-hmm. in the streets. And he, he said, I don't have. And I thought, well, his English was really good. They speak a good proper British English. And I thought maybe he's not understanding me. I said, so where are your grandparents? I do not have. And I said, you do not have, what does, what do you mean you don't have? And I said, well, who do you live with? Well, I don't. And I'm thinking, okay, this kid doesn't understand what mm-hmm. I'm saying. So I said, can you take me to your house? Mm-hmm. And so he takes me and he takes me in between these two buildings and he had swept the dirt perfectly. I mean, it was like so perfect. You could just eat off of it. It was so nice. And he had a couple pieces of clothes he had folded and sat there and he said, I live here. And I said, who do you live with? And he said, nobody, I have known. And I was like, Oh Lord, this is an orphan. This is, this is who he called me to. And so went back to where Troy is. And when he got off the stage, I said, I said, I'm not, because of course I was crying because I'm a girl and I'm always crying. And, um, I took Troy over there. I was like, you, I, I can't tell you, you're going to have to come see. And so he was like, what, what is it, Leanne? And I was like, you just have to come see. And so I took him over there and he was like, what is this? And I said, this is where our friend lives by himself. And he was like, well, that's not going to work. And I said, well, no, it's not. <laughs> no, of course, this is not going to work. And so we took him to eat. There was some resistance there. Um, we were with a big group of, of, of pastors because everybody mm-hmm. was doing this conference and they didn't want this little boy coming with us. And uh, some of them understood it. Some of them didn't. And that's just part of, of, of ministry. And um, mm-hmm. they told us, they said, you know, he, he's a street kid. And we we're like, yeah, we just become aware of, we didn't even know there was a such thing as a street kid. And, um, 
we said, yeah, you know, we understand, but we're going to feed him and then we're going to find him a place. And they were like, no, there's thousands of them. And, and Troy is so quick, as all mm-hmm. of you know. And he said, well, I don't know a thousand of them, but I know this one. Mm-hmm. And we're going to take care of this one. Mm-hmm. And so he was our first one. And then, of course, it was right after that we went to um, Costa Rica and come across the two little girls that were being sex trafficked. Mm-hmm. At that time, we didn't even know what sex trafficking was. We were like, what the heck is a sexual tourist? We, we don't even know what these terms are. We don't even know what this is about. And, of course, you catch on really quick, and those were... The other two little girls that were real memorable. Wow. Well, it is time for us to go behind the veil. Again, I'm going to walk you guys through it one more time in case you want to join us. If you are a stage two or a stage three, yeah, stage three member of ODX, you can all you can just go there. You can go to ODX.tv. There is a big old lit up button right there on the front page. <laughs> for people like me. <laughs> That says uh, the Pulse 24. It says push here. (laughs) You can click on that. And if you're already on ODX, just go ahead and hang out here. We're going to keep on going. I see also your brother Wally is in the chat. Hey, Wally. And also my smart aleck father is in the chat making fun of me for how old I am. He's making sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm telling all your secrets, sir. Exactly. Actually, I would, but he already tells them all. So So, there's nothing for me to tell you guys. (laughs) He says, hey. (laughs) All right, guys. Well, we're going to be going back behind the veil. And uh, we'll be talking to you guys next week. Pastor Troy will be back with us next week on... uh, what episode is it next week? Is it is it twenty eight? Twenty eighth. Yeah, it's wow. the twenty seventh. Yeah, it'll be episode twenty eight. Wow. Wow. wow, it's gone fast. It has. Oh, that would be awesome. <laughs> oh, and KG, I see your comment. Go ahead and call 877-413-0888 and they can answer your questions for you or email support at odx.tv for any other questions you might you guys might have. Alrighty, guys, we will see y'all behind the veil. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>